Hello and welcome to all my dear lovely students. So far we have completed in this chapter the details of pole and pistil interaction along with double fertilization. Now the major portion of the chapter beta we have completed. You have seen how male gametes are produced, how female gametes are produced, then formation of zygote, pole and pistil interaction, everything is done. So mainly Pre-fertilization and fertilization events are done. Today we are going to discuss about the post-fertilization events which includes endosperm development and zygote developing into embryo. So today's class is discussing about the post-developmental changes. The two post-developmental changes are formation of endosperm from a single cell triploid tissue that you formed after triple fusion. And second is formation of embryo after syngamy when zygote is developed. Correct? I hope you all have seen the previous lectures. If you have not gone through the previous lectures, but show that it is very, very important that first you go through the previous lectures which we have discussed. There you will understand the sequence of the chapter that how first gametogenesis was done, then transfer of gamete was done, then fertilization and now we are heading towards the post-fertilization event. The first post-fertilization event in angiosperm is embryo formation correct yes or no beta Endro endosperm are usually triploid nutritive tissue which develops prior to embryo developing from zygote the reason is that embryo development from zygote needs nutrition and that nutrition has to be provided by endosperm correct so first it is very important to form the food and then you start preparing the embryo from the zygote. So there is one very famous line called that endosperm development precedes embryo development which means first endosperm is going to develop and then embryo is going to develop later on. Correct? So first line you are going to write in this is that endosperm development precedes embryo development i hope you have understood this line precedes means to happen before so first endosperm is going to develop and then from endosperm embryo is going to develop correct because endosperm is actually a nutritive tissue now how this endosperm is formed beta you know when the central cell the diploid central cell in the embryo sac fuses with the male gamete then it forms a triploid primary endosperm cell which is nutritive in nature correct shall i write yes ma'am so how endosperm development takes place when a diploid central cell beta fuses with the haploid male gamete to form triploid nutritive endosperm right and this mechanism the process of formation of endosperm is known as triple fusion this i have already taught you in my last class so those students who have not gone through the last lecture and does not know the details of triple fusion then make sure that you first go through the last lecture number five of this chapter and then you come to this topic correct now what is the role of endosperm these are nutritive in nature nutritive in nature that that is provides nutrition to the developing embryo they provide nutrition to the 
developing embryo now beta in case of angiosperm the ploidy of endosperm is 3n now in in some angiosperm whose embryo sac development is oenothera type where haploid polar nuclei polar cell is present there endosperm nature will become diploid and in some families like trapezi family orchidaceae family formation of endosperm is also absent plus in gymnosperms you have already seen in the chapter plant kingdom that their endosperm is haploid in nature so these are certain exceptions which you should also know so now i am going to first write the exceptions right some note points so first note point that i am going to write is that in gymnosperms the ploidy of endosperm is haploid correct why because there it is a pre fertilization because there it is a pre fertilization product so the ploidy is haploidy correct second in those in onagraceae family where the embryo sac development is oenothera type you remember in monosporic i taught you two types of embryo sac polygonum and oenothera type in polygonum you have seen which is which is observed in 80% of the majority of the angiospermic families their endosperm is 3n but if embryo sac development is oenothera type so for if embryo sac development is oenothera type then there the ploidy of endosperm will be 2n so diploid endosperm will be present instead of triploid correct in some families like orchidaceae trapeze endosperm formation is absent are absent now whatever the ploidy may be haploid diploid or triploid if endosperms are present then their main function is to provide nutrition to the developing embryo so the main function is nutrition now that nutrition can be starchy proteinaceous oily etc so now we are going to see in some of the uh, plants what is the nature of endosperm so on the basis of nature of endosperm like if it's wheat and rice you know the seeds of wheat and rice they are endospermic seeds and they have persistent endosperm for the development of embryo later on but their endosperm are starchy in nature they are rich in carbohydrate so the type of nutrition present in rice wheat like cereals it is actually starchy correct yes or no for rice wheat the nature of endosperm is starchy now if i talk about castor seed coconut then they have endosperm which is oily in nature that's why you extract castor oil coconut oil basically you're extracting oil from their endosperm from the persistent endosperm so maybe castor or coconut the endosperm nature is oily now in grains like for example uh, pulses if i say then their endosperm is usually proteinaceous in nature right so this these are certain examples for the nature of endosperm which you have to remember now the endosperm can also be stony like you see in case of beetle nut in case of beetles the endosperm are stony so that can also present that can also happen so i hope what is endosperm 
method of the formation of endosperm nature and ploidy is clear to each and every one of you now endosperm on the basis of type of development beta can be of three types what did i say on the basis of types of development types of development endosperm can be of three type first is free nuclear very easy i have already told you while i was teaching you polygonum type of embryo sac that suppose first triploid cell is formed by the fusion of three cells so this is single cell of triploid endosperm now this wants to develop into multicelled structure so one method of development is continuous karyokinesis not followed by cytokinesis rather cytokinesis when takes place at the last so there is repeated karyokinesis without uh, sorry there behind there is repeated karyokinesis without cytokinesis and if cytokinesis happens at the last then this type of development is free nuclear that means see this is the nucleus yes or no beta now this nuclear will undergo only karyokinesis no cytokinesis what will happen two nuclei per cell multinucleate condition will arise followed by again second karyokinesis multinucleate condition again every time the number of nuclei per cell are increasing without cytokinesis but now cytokinesis is going to happen at the last and there will be wall formation separating every cell from each other correct yes or no so what is free nuclear development of endosperm when initially karyokinesis when initially karyokinesis is not followed by not followed by cytokinesis whereas cytokinesis occurs at last so this type of development is free nuclear which you see in case of liquid endosperm of coconut beta coconut have dual endosperm they have two types of endosperm one which is liquid the which you call coconut water and second is the gari the white part of the coconut which you eat that is also endosperm but that endosperm is cellular and the liquid one is free nuclear correct now second type as i told you is cellular endosperm now what is this beta cellular endosperm when every karyokinesis is followed by cytokinesis parallel karyokinesis and cytokinesis keeps on taking place there's no multinucleate condition arises nucleus karyokinesis plus cytokinesis again karyokinesis plus cytokinesis ultimately number of cells are obtained from one cell due to repeated mitosis right so what is cellular beta when karyo and cyto kinesis takes place simultaneously right so when karyo kinesis and cyto kinesis takes place simultaneously for example the white kernel the white kernel of coconut which you hindi call it as gari correct understood the difference between free nuclear and cellular now third 
टाइप इज बेटा हेलोबियल थर्ड टाइप ऑफ एंडोस्पर्म डेवलपमेंट इज हेलोबियल बेसिकली दिस हेलोबियल टाइप ऑफ एंडोस्पर्म डेवलपमेंट इज अ मिक्स ऑफ फ्री न्यूक्लियर एंड सेल्यूलर सी हाउ सो बेसिकली इट इज अ मिक्स ऑफ सेल्यूलर एंड फ्री न्यूक्लियर हाउ द फर्स्ट डिविजन इज सेल्यूलर दैट मीन्स वेन फर्स्ट कैरियोकाइनसिस विल टेक प्लेस इट विल बी फॉलोड बाय साइटोकाइनस ऑल्सो बट नाउ आफ्टर दिस वॉट एवर डिविजन टेक्स प्लेस दे ऑल आर फ्री न्यूक्लियर दैट मीन्स ओनली टू सेल्स आर प्रोड्यूस्ड विच आर मल्टी न्यूक्लिएट ठीक है सो दिस इज द कंडीशन नाउ first round is cellular and then all rounds are free nuclear this type of endosperm development is helobial which you see in case of helobac family it's a special type of development observed in helobac family which is a mix of cellular and free nuclear first round is cellular and then rest all rounds are free nuclear understood the three types of endosperm development okay now beta there are two types of seeds you already know since your class 11th you have studied chapter morphology endospermic seeds also called as albuminous seeds and non endospermic or ex albuminous seeds majority of the monocot seeds are your endospermic why because in them in the seeds endosperm persist all the endosperm is not consumed during the development of zygote into embryo some amount even persist in the seed however in majority of the dicots like p what happens whole of the endosperm is consumed during the development of zygote into embryo so such seeds are called as non endospermic seeds so it is not compulsory that seeds may have endosperm or may not have endosperm right if they have then endospermic if they don't have non endospermic clear these points i will write when i will teach you the topic seed itself but for time being because i was teaching you about endosperm that's why verbally i gave you this piece of information now you have seen endosperm development is done now what is the next important post fertilization event embryo development embryo is going to develop from that single cell diploid zygote right so you know zygote was formed after syngamy which is a diploid cell now this diploid cell will undergo repeated mitosis to form embryo correct yes or no and now this development is going to take the nourishment from the endosperm now there are two types of zygote one for dicots another for monocots so first we are going to see the embryogeny the development of embryo from the diploid cell zygote in case of dicot plants correct so first we are going to see the dicot embryogeny and then we will see monocot embryogeny understand it very matlab it is a very easy topic if you once listen to me what i am saying very carefully beta then i don't think you will need any book any reference to read it again and again so just open your ears open your eyes and listen as well as see on the board very carefully so this is my zygote correct now what is going to happen with this zygote beta the zygote is going to undergo first asymmetric transverse mitotic division so one mitosis will take place asymmetric asymmetric means two cells will be produced but one will be larger and 
another will be smaller now this portion is micropylar this is chalazil correct so towards the micropyle a larger cell is produced now what happened beta asymmetric unequal transverse mitotic division took place due to which one larger and another smaller cell is produced from zygote the micropylar cell which is above that i have drawn towards above side is known as suspensor cell so larger one towards micropyle is larger suspensor cell and this towards chalaza this lower side this is lower embryonal or basal cell understood everyone correct now what is going to happen now this suspensor this larger micropylar suspensor will undergo more number of division to form 6 to 10 long suspensor now this suspensor will undergo repeated mitotic division to produce 6 to 10 long suspensor correct so what is this towards micropylar end 6 to 10 long suspensor is produced of which the top one you see that i have drawn the bigger one this is known as hostoria and the lower one is known as hypophysis correct so out of 2 to 6 to 10 long suspensor the top most larger one is hostoria and the, the the lower one which is towards the basal cell is hypophysis now similarly beta this embryonal cell when suspensor cell is undergoing division so embryonal cell is not sitting it is also undergoing two vertical and one transverse division so this embryonal cell undergoes two vertical and one transverse division to form two vertical correct and one horizontal division to form eight celled octant embryo so can you count see 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 so due to three rounds of division eight celled eight celled octant embryo arises from this embryonal cell understood or not beta eight celled octant embryo okay now what happens beta this eight celled octant needs nutrition for further development so this hostoria it extracts the nutrition from endosperm here somewhere endosperm has developed right so now this hostoria is going to take the nutrition from the endosperm and give it to the octant embryo now octant embryo will take the nutrition and will keep on dividing so after this the next stage is going to be what the octant embryo will divide further octant embryo beta further divides now what will happen there is suspensor of which hostoria is extracting the nutrition and providing it to the lower octant embryo which undergoes more number of division to form globular embryo correct yes or no 
Now, one more thing I wanted to tell you in this octant embryo beta, you see total eight cells. Out of four cells, inner four cells. The outer four are hypobasal tear and inner four are epibasal tear. So one more thing we can write over here. These all outer ones are known as hypobasal tear. Correct? And the inner ones are known as epibasal tear. So out of eight, four are forming hypobasal tear and four are forming epibasal. Hypobasal tear beta, hypobasal tear later will develop into hypocotyl and radical. Hypocotyl and radical of the embryo. Whereas epibasal tear is going to develop into epicotyl and plimule of the embryo. Even this hypophysis is going to contribute in radical formation along with hypobasal tear. Okay. Now, moving ahead, globular embryo is ready. Next, this is this hostoria is extracting nutrition from the endosperm. Correct? Giving it to globular embryo. Globular embryo is dividing, dividing. Now, more division will take place. More division which will convert globular embryo into heart-shaped embryo. Now, slowly and steadily, embryo will start shake, taking the shape. Now, heart-shaped embryo now what is going to happen beta almost the development of embryo is done the nutrition almost from the endosperm has been extracted at the last what will happen when complete nutrition is extracted when complete embryo is going to develop this suspensor is going to get degenerate because the function of suspensor was simply to extract nutrition from the endosperm and give it to the developing embryo. Once it is done, suspensor gets degenerated. So in next statement you can write, suspensor at last gets degenerated. Correct? Finally, heart shaped embryo then convert into pendant shaped embryo. Right? So, this is your pendant shaped embryo where there is no suspensor. Suspensor work is done. These two ends are representing the two cotyledons of embryo. Why two cotyledon? Because we are studying the embryogeny of dicot seeds in which embryo will develop into two cotyledons. So these are two cotyledons, right? This portion is the plimule portion. Some hypo epicotyl. Hypocotyl and epicotyl basically better they are uh, hypothetical axis. It believes that epicotyl give rise to plimule and hypocotyl give rise to radical, but they are like hypothetical axis. So this portion you can call it as hypocotyl. The tip which develop into root system is radical that is protected by root cap. So this is how the complete dicot embryo is going to be, is going to appear. With the help of the endosperm, it is taking the nutrition through suspensor. Suspensor is lost. Embryo is complete over here. So we started our journey from this single cell zygote. You see how the development took place to produce this complete embryo. Now this embryo is enclosed within the seed. Whenever you give the nutrition, the cotyledon will start coming out. Plimule will start coming out of the seed. And then you finally get a new plant.
क्लियर दिस इज द एम्ब्रियोजेनी ऑफ डायकॉट जाइगोट बट नाउ यू आर गोइंग टू सी द एम्ब्रियोजेनी ऑफ मोनोकॉट जाइगोट इनिशियली फ्यू स्टेप्स आर सेम बट विद लिटिल बिट डिफरेंसेस सो नाउ वी आर गोइंग टू स्टडी अबाउट द एम्ब्रियोजेनी ऑफ मोनोकॉट जाइगोट सो बेटा दिस इज मोनोकॉट जाइगोट अगेन a diploid single cell so first of all first asymmetric transverse division as same as dicot zygote right so first division took place again this is the micropylar side and this is chalazal side a larger micropylar and a smaller embryonal cell is produced correct so this is larger suspensor cell also called as terminal cell and this is lower basal cell now this basal cell beta will again undergo division so how many cells will now be produced in monocot zygote total three cells will be produced the upper as i said is terminal the lower embryonal or basal cell and this is the middle cell correct now beta basal cell is not contributing in any part of the embryo basal cell remains at as it is the main function is of middle cell middle cell is going to undergo repeated division to form plumule radical epicotyle hypocotyle everything is formed by middle cell and terminal cell is only favoring in the formation of one cotyledon you know in monocots there is only one cotyledon in dicots two cotyledons in monocot only one cotyledon so this terminal cell will produce that one cotyledon that you also call as scutellum now this middle cell is going to produce everything plumule epicotyle radical and hypocotyle this basal cell is not going to do anything later on it is going to degenerate once embryo development is done the terminal cell is going to degenerate so now what will be the next step beta so this is all the development portion so just make it in bracket now after this three celled condition this is three celled condition right what will happen middle cell will undergo repeated division so you can draw it like this high uh, basal cell will remain as it is terminal cell is also right now as it is later it will divide to form the cotyledon the only cell which is dividing and dividing is middle cell so middle cell produces large number of cells that later develop into all these structures which i have mentioned correct now from this terminal cell one cotyledon will be attached and here is the basal cell getting my point so what is this this is one cotyledon that develops from the terminal cell which is actually called as scutellum now this is the main embryo which i have drawn this is just a hypothetical diagrams beta right just to make you understand the concept this is just these all are just the hypothetical diagrams which i draw to make my student understand it right this is the topmost portion plumule now in case of monocot seeds in case of monocot embryo beta plumule are well protected by leafy sheath like structure called coleoptile right this is epicotyle then followed by hypocotyle 
then the tip is radical similarly radical is also beta well protected by a sheath like structure called coleorrhiza so this is coleorrhiza understood these two are additional structure which you don't see in dicot embryo that is presence of Uh, coleorrhiza and coleoptile coleorrhiza coleoptile are the protective structures that protects the plumule and radical respectively and this is your basal cell which has done nothing later on it is going to degenerate so you remove it and this is this much is your monocot embryo correct yes or no now if i want to draw the diagram of monocot seed see here only i'll draw the diagram of monocot seed also so this is the actually embryo now monocot seeds beta they are endospermic they use the nutrition from embryo uh, they use the nutrition from endosperm but not complete major portion of endosperm is still persistent in the seeds so seeds are endospermic correct so the major portion of the endosperm is still persistent so this is endosperm and here is your embryo this embryo which i have drawn here is the embryo that is having cotyledon so this is the endosperm persistent endosperm this is the cotyledon and and this is your embryo so this is cotyledon that you call it as scutellum right then this is your plumule of the embryo this is radical of the embryo then this plumule is protected by leafy sheath called coleoptile then this is protected by again sheath like structure but not leafy called coleorrhiza right and this is how the development take place now endosperm and cotyledon in case of monocots they are separated by a proteinaceous layer usually called as aluron layer correct now can you just recall this diagram of monocot seed right and the outermost covering is definitely the seed coat so this is all about the monocot embryogeny i hope you all have understood all the points so i'm just repeating it once again listen to me carefully you had single cell zygote that had undergone two divisions two mitotic division to produce three cell towards micropylar side there is terminal then middle and towards chalazal side there is basal basal is doing nothing major work is done by the middle cell it is going to form all the structures later on of the embryo plumule radical and all and the terminal cell is simply going to contribute in the formation of cotyledon how many one so you can see the diagram now this middle cell is going to undergo repeated division along with the terminal cell is also going to divide but basal cell is going to remain as it is and later it will get degenerated to form plumule epicotyle hypocotyle radical coleorrhiza coleoptile and to them one cotyledon called scutellum is attached basal cell got degenerated right here beta suspensor formation is also there but that suspensor is also not persistent it also gets degenerated there is also no uh, 6 to 10 long suspensor formation which you saw in dicot you don't see in monocots in monocots there is no long suspensor formation so this is another difference which you see correct so here let me write somewhere no long suspensor formation no long suspensor formation 
no long suspensor formation this is how the embryogeny of monocot is actually existing i hope you have understood all the points of dicot embryogeny as well as monocot embryogeny so for today we are going to keep it till here we have completed almost the all topics of the chapter now one more class we will take for studying little bit information about fruit seed but major what we are going to study in our next class is apomixis and polyembryony this is an additional method of you can call asexual reproduction only where you will see that how that even when there is no sexual reproduction taking place still seeds are formed in the fruit that concept we are going to learn in our next class so today's class is simple and short where you learned the post fertilization events that included endosperm development and embryo development now as the rule says you have some questions to solve for your homework zygote develops into very simple question you can answer this next is select the incorrect statement from the following read all the four statements and see if any wrong statement is written if written then that becomes your answer with this i would like to say thank you to all my students i hope you all enjoyed the lecture i hope you all have seen the lecture carefully and understood the details of embryogeny of both monocot and dicot if yes then just read the ncert once and make sure that your concept of embryogeny is done and dusted so yes with this i would like to say thank you for joining me bye bye everyone take care see you in my next class